Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Bobcat Cam webinar series. Today's topic is six types, uh, six types of geometry editing tools and how to use them. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, the goal of today's webinar is to learn about six types of geometry editing tools and how to use them. As you know, my name is Al DePaulo. I'm the voice of the Bobcad uh, After Dark video series. You can find us on Instagram at Bobcad Cam, hashtag Bobcad, hashtag Bobcam. So what are we going to learn? Uh, today we're talking about uh, common geometry editing tools. We're going to talk about translate, rotate, 3D rotate, trim and extend, break, and 2D boolean. As you know, with Bobcad, you can expect fewer steps, better cuts, and more profit. Now, uh, we do have a special promotion for all the webinars attendees here today. I'm going to go over that real quick. Um, we have a refer a, pr uh, refer a friend promotion that we're running this week exclusively for our webinar attendees. You need to call the 877-333-4909. You got to call in with that number, you refer a friend, and you're going to get a free seat of the software. So if you know somebody that would be interested in the Bobcat software that could benefit from the Bobcat software that, you know, you would like to participate in our weekly webinars, um, Call in with this number, you refer a friend, and you will get a free seat of your software. Uh, we also have a uh, Machinist Toolbox offer. It's our speed and feed calculator and our shop uh, utility. Uh, if you guys make any purchases today, uh, calling 877-333-4903, you'll get the Machinist Toolbox for free uh, as part of your purchase. So those are the exclusive webinar promotions that we're running here today. Now what I'm gonna do, is uh, get started while I'm getting started here and set uh, get my screen set up. Uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and give me a quick shout out? Let me know uh, who you are and where you're from, and uh, we'll get going. All right, it looks like we have uh, Grant here from NorCal. We got uh, Bill. I think Bill's out of Michigan. Thank you so much for coming up. We got Erwin um, uh, from New Jersey. We got Larry from Illinois, Michael from the UK, uh, Vic from Ohio, Chuck from PA, Robert from San Jose, California, uh, Brian out of Kool-Aid, California, Jim out of Ontario, Mike in California, Doug in Virginia Beach. I want to thank each and every one of you for spending some time with me here today. I appreciate uh, you guys coming and joining with us. Uh, Bill in Texas, Steve in Arizona, um, Dale in Wisconsin, John in Syracuse, New York. We got Raymond in Michigan, Paul in Tennessee. Again, I appreciate each and every one of you spending some time with me here today. So number one, uh, any questions that you guys have about the software, go ahead and fire it away. Uh, it would be great if you could um, uh, keep it topic specific, but if you have something that is off topic, please uh, go ahead and ask away any questions that you have. If I can't address it in today's webinar, I will either uh, email you a reply. I do that often, um, or we can open up the questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, let's see here. Robert had a question. Can you repeat the part about the seat license? Yes, Robert, we are running a promotion um, for our webinars, an exclusive webinar attendee promotion. You have to call 877-333-333. 4903. It's a refer a friend promotion. Uh, okay, Andy, I understand, but uh, you can uh, spend as much time as you can, and uh, if not, we'll send you the recording anyways. But it is a refer a friend promotion, Robert. So if you know somebody that would be interested in the Bobcad software, you call in with the 877-333-4903 number. Uh, you talk with your account manager, you refer your friend, and uh, you can get a free seat of your software. So for more details, just call into that number, and they'll uh, attach you with your uh, they'll attach you with your account manager, and they'll get you going on that. Okay. And uh, yeah, you just call in off of that number and just let them know that you're on the webinar and you want to take advantage of the refer a friend promotion. Okay, so any questions that you have, go ahead and ask away. A uh, little housekeeping, if you don't mind, what version of the Bobcad software are you running? If you're running Bobcad, if you're running 30, 29, 28, 25, just go ahead and write in what version you have. So this way we know what versions. We got some 30s, we got some 29s, some 28s. 
Uh, so it's just good for me to understand what version you guys are running. If any of you are confused, you're like, hey, what is he talking about? In the GoToMeeting control panel, there is a question area. You can write in questions. That is how you communicate with me. Uh, so go ahead and um, use that section to write in any questions and also to answer my questions. Now, if this is your first webinar, the first time that you've been joining here, uh, please just write in. This is my first webinar. Uh, it'd be great to see if we have any newbies in here. I have a feeling that Kim might be a newbie, maybe, but we will see. Either way, uh, whether you're new to our webinars or old to our webinars, it's great to have you here today. So let's go ahead and get at it. Now, all right, something uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, we do have a Facebook page and uh, we have started to do uh, live streaming on Facebook. Um, this was uh, one of the sample files that we had done the other day. Um, if you're on Facebook and you see the live stream, you can click for um, uh, the notification. So this way you'll know when we go live. I've been going live at about 5.30 uh, Eastern Daylight Time and uh, covering CAD and CAM and review. Uh, just another resource for you guys. So if you're on our Facebook page, uh, jump over there and subscribe to the notifications. Now, um, the first topic that I want to talk about here has to do with Translate. Okay, translate is uh, Bobcat's word for moving. Uh, there's a couple of uh, things for this. Number one, uh, under utilities, this is where you're going to find the majority of your editing tools. So if you're thinking about editing, uh, you want to be under the utilities menu. Uh, one of the things that you're going to notice where it says translate, and I have it set to F4, uh, a pro tip for you guys for the common features you guys use all the time, like uh, translate or rectangle or whatever it may be, you can establish hotkeys for those functions. I recommend using your F commands. You have F1 through F12 on your keyboard, and you can assign them to the most common features that you use. If you haven't done that, I would recommend doing it. Again, you can go to preferences and shortcut. You can pick any of the features within the software. Anyone that you want, you can assign a shortcut. I recommend the F, uh, F1 keys. Um, or the F1 through F12 because they're really quick and easy. Uh, also, if you're training other people in the shop, uh, using the F keys, it makes it easier for them to remember. Thank you so much, Larry, for showing up here today out of Tennessee. Looks like you're a longtime user, so that is good to see you here. Now, Translate. So we're going to go to Utilities Translate. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about is the functions of the software. If you're new to Bobcad um, or if you're an old user, like you had run some of our classic versions uh, and you're getting into the more current versions, it is uh, action object. So anytime you go to use a function in the software, uh, you'll go to that function first. Um, once you've gone to that function, that's the action, then you need to select the object. Um, once you've selected the object, you have to tell it what you want to work with. Uh, you can either right-click OK, or a lot of times I'll use my space bar, which is a right-click OK. All right. So the first one with Translate, Translate, there's a, a couple of options. So we have Sketch Enter, uh, we have Drag, we have Reselect. Okay. Um, if you are familiar with Bobcad, we used to have a function called Delta. Uh, if anybody remembers the Delta function, uh, go ahead and fire away. Like if you if you remember Delta, the Delta move in the previous versions, a lot of uh, customers go, hey, you guys got rid of Delta. Where did it go? And um, really, it didn't go anywhere. We just uh, got rid of the name Delta. Okay, so after you've selected your geometry, we go to Utilities, Translate, we select our geometry, we spacebar to lock it in, you are actually in a delta mode, okay? The delta mode allows you to uh, incrementally move the part from where it is. So I could say I need this to go one inch over an X, I could put one in there, and then this would move one inch over an X, or let's, uh, let's make it um, seven inches so it's a little easier to see. Okay, so this is your delta move right here in this section. Um, if you guys are trying to use a delta function, in other words, where you want to take the geometry and just move it from where it is, uh, that is where you're going to do that, okay? So you're going to do it under, uh, let me erase. Okay, so you're going to do it under G2, 
just the end position and you can tell it where it's going. Now, the other thing that you're going to see here too is you will see a preview, okay? So as you're using Translate, you will see a preview. The other thing that you're going to see too is this, um, these axis display here. So we have Z, uh, we have Y, and we have X. And using these uh, dynamic drawing handles, uh, this allows you to pull the geometry in just Y. Or uh, you could select X and be able to pull it along in X. Or you could select Z and pull it along in Z. OK, um, wherever you pull it to, the coordinates will come up for that location and then you'll be able to adjust it if need be. Uh, we're going to just bring it back to zero. OK, so the first one, first one that we have, I, I, there's some some things that I want you guys to be aware of. So let's uh, let's draw like a, a rectangle. I'm just going to do a 10 by 10. OK, and then um, I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to draw another rectangle, a 3 by 3, and I'm just going to move this over here. Okay, so we have a 10 by 10, and we have a 3 by 3. And, uh, you know, I may want to move this geometry to the center of this geometry, you know. So, or I may want to move the center of this geometry to maybe one of these corners or a midpoint, all right. So, when we go to Utilities and then Translate, we window select this geometry, and then we choose our space bar. We're going to get our, our, our dynamic handles here. One of them you're going to see is that there's actually a point, and that point would be right in the center of the geometry. So that's good to know. When you select your geometry, we find the center of the geometry, and that's where this reference ball is. And then what you can do is you can click on that ball, and you can drag that geometry and then you can snap it to different locations. Now, another thing that's good to know about this, not only can you snap it to, you know, like an end point or a midpoint, okay? Once you have it snapped in that location, then you can use, you know, the Y only um, uh, handle here so you could pull this up or down in Y, okay? Or what you could do is snap this over to this corner here, and then you could move the X only, and then that way you can center this along X, okay? So just a little bit about um, utilities, translate. The drag mode is the default, okay? Uh, it will remember the last position that you had uh, moved the geometry to. If you want to do a delta move, you can come in here and type in these coordinates, okay? So you could say one and one or two and two or whatever it needs to be. Um, you can also drag this geometry around, so you can drag this where you might want it to be. Wherever you drop it, the coordinates for uh, its location will come up here, and then um, you can adjust those uh, coordinates as necessary. Okay, so that's the first part of Translate, which is drag. Now, the other part of Translate here, uh, let me see, let me get a pen. If there's any questions about that, go ahead and fire away. Um, so drag equals delta. And when dragging, uh, when you've selected your geometry, uh, what it's going to do is find the center, and then you can use your handles to drag in X or to drag in Y. Uh, you can use the dot in the center to drag in X, Y, and Z. You can snap to a location, and then you can also uh, drag off of that location. All right, so that's a, a little bit about um, the drag. Now, the next one I want to talk about is Sketch Enter. Um, Let's see, there is, uh, 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 Andy, you probably need to download an update for the software. Uh, if you're not on the current build, I would recommend doing so. You might be on earlier build. Uh, Mark has a question. I have a problem. How do I limit to just one? Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second here, Mark. Okay, yeah, I was going to get into that as well. That's a good point, Brian. Um, Brian's talking about there is the snap grid. Uh, if you look at the bottom portion of your screen here, um, there will be a snap grid. This is something you can turn on and you can turn off. Okay, so by, uh, let's go to here, by clicking on the magnet icon, uh, magnet icon, you can turn off the snap grid, which puts uh, dragging in a sketch mode. If you turn on the magnet icon, then you have a snap grid based on the increment that you put in here, and you can adjust that increment on the fly. So that's a good point there, Brian. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a sketch enter move. So we're going to go utilities, 
translate. Okay, we're going to select the geometry that we want to work with. We're going to hit our space bar to lock it down. Okay, um, we're going to change our mode from a drag. We're going to go to a sketch enter. Okay, so we're going to go to sketch enter. Um, in sketch enter, you have really two sections that we're talking about here. You have your start section, and you can see it's either set to pick or enter. And then you have your end section. Okay, so. Um, your start section is where you're going to start from and your end section is where you want to go. So, you know, I may want to start in this corner here and then I want to move that corner to th maybe this midpoint here. Okay. So I want to take all of this geometry and move it to where it's over here. All right. So that is actually easy to do. And that is one of the ways that you would use your sketch enter. Okay. So what we're going to do is not a pen. I want a mouse. Okay, so we have it selected, we space bar. What we're gonna do is pick our start position and then we're gonna pick our end position. So shift, left click to show the snap points, click on the point you want to start with, okay? Shift, left click to show our snap points and then pick on the end position you want it to go to, all right? So that is an example of a pick enter. Let's go ahead and do this again. Uh, the 250 snap grid value explains why drag coordinates kept ending with two zeros. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, if you want to turn off your snap grid, you can turn it off. Um, it's actually very useful to have it on Vic, but I'm glad that uh, worked out for you. Okay, so we got sketch enter here. Um, this time what we're going to do is we're going to do a pick. So when we pick, you know, maybe we're going to pick this position here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do an enter. Maybe uh, I believe that this is drawn on center. So at the center of this, this here is zero, zero. So we want to go from there to zero, zero. So we want to go from there to there. Okay. So how do we do that? We're going to erase our uh, drawing here. Let me go back to my mouse. I'm going to do a enter of zero, zero, zero. I'm going to shift left click to grab or which corner was it i forgot shift left click to here we're going to grab this point and then it will move that point to zero zero okay so you have a start position and an end position that you're uh you can enter a start position or pick a start position you can pick an end position or enter an end position okay so that is how translate works with the sketch enter if you guys have any questions about that go ahead and fire away now we do have a reselect. If you're in the middle of translating and, and maybe you selected the wrong geometry um, or you or you wanted to select a different group of geometry, you can choose reselect, which is right here, and that will allow you to change the uh, the geometry that you want to select. Now, um, you know, if you if we select this, we'll have to right click our spacebar to lock it down. Um, if we wanted to change our selection or if we wanted to uh, initiate another translate function, we can do reselect, shift, left click, space bar, and that will uh, reselect that geometry. Okay, so reselect allows you to, um, once you're in the function, be able to select other geometry that you can move. Uh, interesting how we went from incremental to absolute values. Um, I'm not sure where you're saying that, but uh, but that's okay. If you could elaborate, Vic, that'd be great. Okay, so uh, the other thing I want to talk about is scale. A lot of times customers, they want to know how you scale up geometry. How do, you, how do you go up or how do you go down? Um, you will notice a scale factor here. Um, the scale factor allows you to uh, change the size of your geometry. You can make it um, uh, bigger or you can, uh, let's just do enter, enter. You can make it bigger or you can make it smaller. So this is adjusting the scale factor by point, uh, 1.1. Uh, we did make some adjustments with that uh, in the version 30. Um, you can scale from center. Uh, so we can scale from center and then we can go 1.5 and, and that will scale that from center. Let's actually reselect this. Uh, let me undo here. Let's get back to uh, over here. Okay, so we're, if you want to scale your geometry up or down, a lot of times if you import metric, uh, a metric drawn file and you want to make it into inches, you'll use a scale factor for that. Uh, we're going to go to translate. We're going to get rid of our scale factor for a second or our scale option. We can turn it off. 
We can reselect this geometry and hit our space bar. Um, we want to tell it to go from where it is to where it is. We can use our scale factor. We could say it's two times bigger. Uh, scale from center, we choose OK, and then that will scale that geometry up. Now, we do have um, dynamic scaling, too. So uh, you can go utilities, translate uh, in your drag mode. So if you're in sketch enter, uh, the uh, um, scale factor, you enter a scale factor here. If you're in the drag mode, when you select this geometry, you'll notice this handle will come up. And this is your dynamic scale, so you can make the geometry bigger or smaller. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily use that for uh, like a mechanical type part. Uh, more so you would use it for letters or shapes or, you know, if you're doing uh, something uh, that is not as precise, but you want to change the sizing of it. So a lot of times we use that for letters, and it really does a good job. If you guys have any questions about scale, uh, go ahead and let me know. All right, so... So we did uh, scale there. Uh, let's see what else we have. So we got utilities, translate. Uh, let's get rid of our scale factor. What if we want to make some copies of this? We want to do you know, three or four copies this way or three or four copies this way. Uh, what we'll do is select our geometry and hit our space bar to lock in our selection. Um, we can click on where it says copy here and then we can enter the number of copies that we want. Um, what's really nice about this is it will give you a preview of those copies. So this way, as you're adjusting your spacing, um, you can really see uh, what it's going to look like. Um, the other thing you can do, too, is you can move this uh, in any orientation. So this way, as you're making copies, uh, you can visualize what's going on. Once you get them where you need to be, you can lock it down, uh, choose OK, and cancel. Now... All right, so that's a little bit about copy there, uh, start and end and scale. Okay, so uh, you keep hitting the space bar. What is the purpose of that? Chuck, I'm hitting the space bar to lock in my selection. So what I want to do is I want to say utilities translate. So that's the function I want to use, okay? I'm going to select the geometry. That's what I want to work with, but I have to, like, uh, confirm that selection or lock down that selection. So when I hit my spacebar, that is confirming the selection or, or completing the selection, if that makes sense. So that's why you keep hearing me hit my spacebar, because I'm locking in my selection. All right. All right. Very good. Is there any other questions about Translate that you got? I mean, we're about 30 minutes in here and uh, a lot of time on Translate. If there's any other questions about it, go ahead and fire away. Uh, Translate is something we use all the time. You use it to move geometry. You use it to scale geometry. Um, you use it to make copies when you're making iterations down the line. Uh, so you're going to find yourself using this quite often. Uh, again, uh, you can use your hotkey. So mine is F4. So if I go to F4, I can pull that up really quickly. Um, hitting OK. Yeah, the space bar, that, that's a good point, Brian. Um, uh, Chuck, uh, the space bar is the same as a right-click OK. Uh, right, exactly. The space, instead of hitting right-click OK, what you can do is hit your space bar. Uh, does the spacebar work on all functions? Erwin, uh, for a right-click OK, as far as I know, yes, it does. So anywhere where you would use a right-click OK, you can use a spacebar, I believe. So I, I may be wrong, but I don't think so. All right. So there we go. So we got translate. We're going to move on to the next one here. Uh, this one is called uh, rotate. So we're going to let me go back to my file here. You know, here you can see I have this uh, this model in translate um, and rotate. All of the these editing functions that work for wireframe uh, surfaces and solids. So let's say let's say on this particular file, if I wanted to rotate this file, uh, what I can do is utilities and then rotate. Okay. Uh, using rotate, the, the first thing we'll need to do, so the action was utilities rotate. The next thing we need to do is select the geometry. Okay, I'm going to hit my space bar to lock in the selection. And then what you're going to see with the rotate is this, again, these dynamic drawing handles. Uh, there's a couple of things that this is doing. Number one, the, the rotation center. Where is the rotation center from? So you can see how I can move this rotation ball in order to change where I want to rotate from. Um, and you can pick up snap points off the model, so I could pick on that edge there. And then from here, I can use these handles 
to rotate which way I want to rotate that geometry. So that's what these are for, is so that I could say, all right, I want to rotate it in Z, and it would be this amount, or if I wanted to rotate it in Y, uh, it would be this amount, okay? So, you'll, you know, you can use the handles to rotate the geometry, uh, get it close, and then you can come in and, and edit what you actually want um, that value to be. So maybe, you know, this one's minus five degrees or, or whatever it may be. Now, you know, there's, again, there's a lot of different ways you can use this. If I go back to the wireframe uh, geometry set, let's say that you wanted to change the angle of this line here. Instead of it being a horizontal line, you wanted to uh, change the angle of it, okay? What you can do is utilities, rotate, select this line, space bar to lock it down, um, click on that, uh, the center ball there, you can drag this over to the corner you want to reference from, and then you can use your handle here to adjust what that angle is, okay? So you can see how uh, using rotate, it's not just left for wireframe. Can you please show an example of translating 3D objects that is off on all three axes, all planes back to zero so that it can be milled easy with three axes. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on this real quick for you, Peter. If you have your geometry on a compound curve, like if you look at this one, uh, this is my front view. So control one is a, uh, I'm sorry, control one is a top view, control two is a front view. So you can see how this geometry is aligned with uh, a standard plane. What Peter's talking about is if this part was on a compound curve as such, okay, what do you do in order to align that part back to a plane? Okay, um, what I uh, personally do, Peter, a lot of times it's not worth it for me to try to move the part back to zero, all right? Instead, what I will do is when I run my job here, Okay, I can align my uh, part to, or I can align, first I can align my stock, but I can align my zero to the part. Okay, so I could say the X direction is going to be this way. All right, so now I have my stock aligned to the part. The next thing I'm going to do is set my zero. So I'm going to say my origin is going to be in this back corner here. And then uh, my X axis is going to be running along this way. My y-axis is going to be running along um, that way. I can swap which way it is. So even though that part was on a compound curve, I can align the part, or I'm sorry, I can align the zero to the part so I don't have to rotate the part back to zero, all right? Um, I can show you the steps to bring everything back to zero, uh, but it, it takes a, a few more, uh, it, it would take more time than I need. I do have a video on this side of the stock wizard, though. It's one of our quick tip videos. Uh, so if I, uh, if I remember to do it, Peter, I'll email you that quick tip video so you can look at that in a little more detail. Okay, let's go back to here. Um, Vic was like, that's a really sick feature. I think you're talking about the rotate. Again, you know, sometimes you're trying to figure out an angle here, or you may just be working with that geometry. You can do utilities, rotate. You can select the geometry that you want to work with. You can align where you want it to rotate from, and then you can use these handles to drag or change the angle in which that line is lo located at. Okay, so that is something. Yeah, Grant, if you want it, uh, make sure Grant say I want the email about aligning the stock to the part, please. Um, okay, very good. So we have rotate. Uh, all right, let's go back over to this file here. Let's undo, undo. Uh, we're back to a normal view. Let's uh, delete our job here, and we'll go back to top. Okay, so if we go to utilities and then rotate, we can select our geometry, space bar to lock it down. Okay, um, one of the things that you need to adjust is your origin. This is where you're rotating from. All right, uh, when you're rotating, uh, from you can enter a value here so you could say z minus one or x minus one so you can mdi or type in what that value is or what you can do is grab this ball here and then snap it to your model all right you have angle around axis this is what you're rotating i'm rotating 90 degrees in x 
uh, or we could say zero, or I'm rotating, ni rotating 90 degrees in Y, and then we, uh, we have that value there. Or we could say we're rotating 90 degrees in Z, or any combination, 90 degrees of X and Y, okay? So uh, your angle around the axis, that's saying which axis you're rotating and by how many degrees. Um, you do have a, a scale value here too. Uh, I'd have to say that I haven't used that very often, but you could rotate let's say, uh, you know, 90 degrees in uh, Z, but then I could make this a smaller item. So I could rotate it and I could scale it. Um, so scale, just like translate, there's a scale factor. Uh, so you can make it up or down. Um, the other thing you can do here, let's, um, you know, maybe we're going to change this. Maybe this is going to be 0 0.9 degrees. Maybe we're going to add three copies. Okay, so now what we can do is change uh, where this is being rotated from, and then um, using the scale factor, it's, it's actually going to be making it smaller uh, than it was originally. If you keep the scale the same, then the size would stay the same. Again, you have your previews with your copies, so you can come in here and you can adjust uh, visually you know, where where these shapes would be and what that uh, configuration might be. Now, this particular part, I mean, doesn't really make sense uh, how I'm rotating it, uh, more so I'm just illustrating the functions of rotate, okay? So you have an angle around the axis. That is this section here. Um, this is gonna be uh, which axis you're rotating around and by how much. You have your scale factor, uh, which is here. You can adjust the scale up or the or adjust the scale down to make the object bigger or smaller. Um, you have copy. So if you wanted to make copies, you'd be able to add multiple copies. So you could rotate and make copies down the line. Um, an example of that might be, let me clear this. Let's go back to my pen. We'll come over here. Okay, so I have this uh, this shape drawn up at this point. I could do utilities rotate. Uh, select this. I'm going to move my uh, zero position over. Uh, we're going to make it minus 10. Uh, all right, we're going to make it minus 20. <laughs> um, and then from here, I could say, all right, I want uh, six copies uh, in a circle. So I'll say 360 divided by six. And then what that does is give me the increment uh, to rotate around the axis. And then I could say number of copies, five. And then that will give me this particular shape here. All right. So that's an example of using rotate, you know, where you can draw one of these and then you can rotate around and make multiple copies. All right. So uh, and again, just similar to uh, if we undo this, we do utilities, rotate, uh, select this geometry space bar. Um, you have your angle around axis. You have your scale. You have your copy. If you're going to be uh, rotating more than one object at a time, uh, you can, or multiple instances of needing to rotate, instead of canceling out of the function, you can use reselect. Reselect would allow you to reselect which geometry you want to work with. Uh, hopefully that makes sense there. And then the last one here is the origin. This is um, the origin of where the rotation center would be. And that way you can adjust where that center would be. You can either enter those values uh, or what you can do is uh, manually uh, grab these handles and be able to visualize what that rotation would be. Now, a pro tip for you guys, you may not know about this. Under preferences, um, I'm going to go to settings part. There is a snap increment for the rotate. So I have my snap, snap increment um, for angle set to five degrees. So every time I pull on that handle, it moves at five degrees. So you can adjust that. You can make it a smaller number. You can make it 90 degrees, wh whatever makes most sense for you. Uh, but that's a pro tip there. Um, so I think five degrees works out really good for you. So that way you can rotate, select the geometry. Uh, and then now as I drag these uh, rotation increments, they're going to be in five um, five degree increments. So it just makes it easier to visualize and kind of get these round numbers. So uh, if there's any questions about rotate, go ahead and fire away. Uh, otherwise, we're going to move on to the next one, which is called 3D rotate. Okay. 3D rotate. Any questions? Mm, 
No questions. Okay, very good. So who knows what 3D rotate is for? Uh, and, and I think it's kind of funny because when I look at the input of the software, when you have rotate, you have X, Y, and Z. So that's 3D, right? So what is 3D rotate? Uh, if you've used 3D rotate, go ahead and raise your hand. Anybody in here? Let me uh, lower your hands. Let's see. Does, has anybody used 3D rotate? Go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, Barry has. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. And uh, Kim has. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So very good. So 3D rotate gives you uh, one angle. So you can adjust an angle, right? So we can select this geometry and space bar. And then, so you can adjust this angle. So this might be 90 degrees or it might be 20 degrees or whatever the case might be, right? But what's cool about 3D Rotate is this handle here. So this handle actually is the axis of the rotation, okay? So you can set what the axis of the rotation is. And um, there's just times where you want to rotate, uh, like it's a, it's a geometry condition, uh, I've used it, but not successfully. Okay, Brian. Um, it, it, again, it's really cool. You come in here, you go to 3D Rotate. Uh, you're going to select your geometry, and then you're going to have these two points. You can see there's one point here, so that's a start. And then there's another point here, and that's an end. And what you're defining is the axis of the rotation. So wherever you set these two points... When you rotate, you're going to rotate around that axis. So you can see how this is rotating around this axis here. So we're going 90 degrees around that axis. Probably a more um, common scenario here is where you have uh, some kind of angled line that you want to rotate around. So we'll go utilities, 3D rotate. We're going to select our geometry here. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a line for you. So let's say that this is what you, you have this here and you want it rotated around that line. Um, what we're going to do is utilities 3D rotate or rotate 3D, uh, select our geometry, space bar to lock it in, and then I can align this one to that. I can align this one to that. All right, so that becomes my axis of rotation. And then we could say 180 degrees and boom, I probably should have made a copy. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully, Brian, I, I, I mean, there, it's just, it's one of those things. It's a tool that's in your toolbox and there are certain scenarios where it makes it uh, very useful to have that there. Um, it's probably something that I don't use as often, but uh, very useful. Let's jump back over to, th to the 3D model here. Let's cancel on this one. Uh, we'll go to a top view. Um, we're going to do utilities, 3D rotate. We're going to select our model here. Okay, so we can grab, you know, maybe this corner here uh, to that corner there. And then this would allow us to rotate uh, that geometry to be able to rotate it around uh, around this axis of rotation. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, again, you could um, move where this is. This could be on some weird uh, vector. Uh, so again, you'd be able to rotate around uh, that axis of rotation. Okay. If there's any questions about that, go ahead and fire away. Again, if you need to reselect your geometry to rot rotate something else, you could do reselect, select your geometry. If you want to keep it simple, maybe you know you could go from this corner uh, to that corner there, and that would give you your rotate here. Uh, again, there are just some scenarios where being able to find um, two points for your axis is really helpful. Um, Brian has a question in rotate. How do you rotate the object relative to another? So the base object might be at a line at something like 2.33 degrees, but we might not know what the we might not know that dimension. How would you grab and rotate the existing geometry? Kind of tricky to describe in in a question. Okay, so I think what you're trying to say is how do you rotate um, along uh, how do you rotate? So, uh, yeah, it's, it is a little bit tricky. Um, let me see here. Uh, if you had the part already rotated and you needed to rotate it more, um, I'll probably have to do, uh, I'll see if I can, um, uh, connect with you, Barry, uh, after the, the webinar 
send you an email and, and uh, I, I, it sounds like you probably have a file that you're working on. So it'd be great to kind of go th through that together with you. So we'll look at that one. Um, we can uh, reconnect after. Put your email in there to make sure that we're on the same page. Um, the noms are confusing. Which view uh, uh, X is pointing, uh, Z, Y appears, negative direction. Okay, so Grant, what, what I have going on here, um, this is the, the nomen is what they call it, right? So I think that's what you're talking about. Um, there are two options that you can do here. This is a standard uh, Quartesian uh, drawing system. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put my axis display up. I, I, I like to have it up sometimes. Other times I don't like to have it up. Uh, this is my x-axis, that's the horizontal. This is my y-axis, that's the vertical, okay? Um, there is a function called lathe, excuse me, lathe mode. If you go to modules here, and or turning mode, what that will do is it will change your axis um, as if you were running on a lathe, okay? So uh, X becomes Z and Y becomes X. Uh, I generally don't uh, put it in turning mode. I, I almost feel like that might be what you're dealing with. Um, so you'd want to check that under modules, turning mode. Uh, in turning mode, if, if you're a lathe guy and you want to uh, input your axis uh, positions like it would be on the machine, you can put the software into turning mode and it just uh, swaps your X to Z and your Y to X. Okay, no, Y is pointing negative. Um, well, Y is pointing negative this way. And uh, so, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what we're talking about here. If I put my, uh, I, I don't know if you're saying the part that you're working on or just the standard uh, interface. You or, or maybe you're talking about the machine setup. Uh, Grant, uh, let's see here. Uh, let me. Okay, so let, let me see if I can get back to that because I want to keep moving here. Uh, so we did rotate. We did angle, reselect, copy, start and end on our rotate and on our 3D rotate. So the next one I want to get into is uh, is the uh, trim and extend. Grant saying, see the Y is negative. Uh, okay, so if I go to a top view, um, the zero for the coordinate system, here's the coordinate system that I'm in. So we have top X, Y. So this way is positive and this way is negative, right? Let me turn turning mode off. So Y, this way is positive. Uh, X, this way is positive. Y, this way is positive. Here, let me get the, the highlighter up. So this is Y plus. This one is X plus. Okay, this one here is X uh, plus. This one here is y plus okay so i'm not oh, okay <laughs> all right yeah all right so there we go oh well i'm glad that helped you there uh let's uh, erase this we'll go back to a normal here and keep going okay the next one that i have here i'm looking at it from standing uh in front of the machine oh i think you're talking about um uh, like a front post lathe uh, maybe are you talking about a lathe or a mill well, okay, we'll get into that a little bit more, Grant. Uh, trim and extend is what I'm on to next. This one is really common. I have uh, a few minutes left, and we still have one, two, three to go through. Uh, trim and extend, uh, there are a bun bunch of functions, one, two, three, four, five, six functions for trim and extend. Uh, let's go back over to the wireframe drawing here. Uh, okay, so what do we have? The, the first one that I want to talk about with trim and extend is trim screen. Uh, for a lot of times, uh, you may just want to extend out some geometry, and trim screen is a great way to do this. You can just click on a line, and then you can click, um, uh, click on a line and click, huh? Uh, let me try this again. Utilities, trim and extend screen. Okay, uh, all right, so let me cancel again. I'm not sure what that error was, but let's do it again. So you got utilities, trim and extend, screen. If you want to click on this line here and just extend it out arbitrarily, uh, trim screen is a great way to do that. Uh, a lot of times you might use this for when you're working with 
construction geometry. Okay, so trim screen. I was on break. Okay, thanks, Vic. Um, okay, so let's go to the next one. So we have trim uh, screen. The next one is trim one entity. Okay, so trim one entity. Entity. You can click on uh, one entity. You click on the two, and it and it does one at a time. So you can see how there's two pieces here. So I'm going to click on this line. Okay, and I want to get rid of this section here, so I click on this line there, and you can see it goes away. So trim one, trims one at a time, click on this one, click to there. Okay, that trims one at a time, all right? If there's any questions about uh, trim one, let me know. You have trim two, so trim and extend two. So we can go here, uh, from here to there, and you can see it's two. Now, the reason why it's called trim and extend is because it will trim or it will extend. Let me go to, uh, uh, let's go like this, let's go like that. So if you have two entities that aren't intersecting currently, right? So we have two that aren't intersecting. If we do trim and extend one entity, I can say I wanna extend this line up to that line, okay? So that's why it's called trim and extend, okay? Um, if you're doing trim and extend one, it does one entity at a time, one line or arc at a time. If you have trim and extend two, then what that will do is two of them at a time. So you can click on two and it will trim them together. So I, I think that one's probably uh, pretty straightforward as far as trim one, uh, trim two. Um, sometimes, you know, like maybe I want to trim this section here. Okay, but what ends up happening is because of my uh, selection order, like I get this side versus that side, uh, you want to click on the side that you want to keep or the side that you want to work with. So if I want to close off, like get rid of this section here, all right, I'm going to click on this section and this section, the side that I want to keep. Now there is a preview there too, so uh, the preview will help you if you're Clicking on these two, you're going to see that it's going to preview uh, cutting that uh, those two lines away. So that will help you with uh, which side. But generally, it's the side that you want to keep uh, that you want to look at. So you have trim one, trim two. Uh, the other one we have here is modal. Uh, I don't use modal all that often, uh, so I don't really have a good example for that. Um, you know, you may have uh, like a line like this. And what you want to do is trim all of these up to that line. You could do trim modal. Let's see if I get it right. Um, this is the reference. So we'll click on this one. And then this one, th that one, and that one will trim up to that line. Okay. So let's, uh, let's look at that again. I'm going to give a, a reference line uh, like this uh, down here. Okay. I can do utilities, trim and extend, trim modal. Uh, the first thing I would do is pick on my reference line, and then I could say trim that one, that one, and that one to that line. Okay, so that is trim modal. Uh, let's undo that one here for a second. Uh, okay, we'll cancel that. Uh, the next one we have here is trim strings. Now, this one I definitely use quite a bit. Um, but before I move on, anybody in here use trim modal? Um, I have a feeling that you may use trim, uh, let's see, Grant said he does, or let me see, anybody, raise your hand if you use trim modal, uh, no, uh, Vic says no, and I don't think anybody else does, uh, I don't see any other hands being raised here, I believe trim modal, a lot of times you may use in like a print making environment, uh, you know, to get all your geometry reference to a line, Mike says he does, I'm curious, let me know how you, how you use it, Mike. Um, or in what scenario you use it, that would be really cool. Um, all right, and while he's doing that, let me uh, move on to the next one here. Uh, trim strings, this one I use quite a bit. Uh, trim strings allows you, uh, like a lot of times what you're gonna do is you'll start out with a, uh, a rectangle of some size, okay? You're reading the print, uh, trim, trim lines to circles is what Mike said, so that, that's, a, that's a good option there. Um, Let's see, uh, let's, uh, let's go like that and like this and like this, like that maybe. Let's go trim and extend modal. So that's my base geometry and then I want that one and okay, well that one wouldn't hit it and that one and that one going there. I, I don't know. I think I would, uh, 
uh, or to trim many lines that are long and short at the same time. Okay, trim to a circle or trim many lines that are long or short at the same time. So uh, yeah, trim modal, I mean, again, this is one of the functions you have here. I probably don't use this one as often, uh, but I definitely use uh, strings quite a bit, okay? Strings is, and the reason why I use strings quite a bit is because when you're reading a print uh, and you're drawing from a print, which occasionally we still need to do, right? Uh, a lot of times you're going to do things like line parallel. You know, maybe this one's a half inch in from here. Uh, or, whoa, okay. Scale is, uh, let's go five inches in from there, five inches in from there. You know, maybe this one's uh, 10 inches. Uh, come on, uh, one zero. Uh, 10 inches down from there. Maybe this one, or... Uh, you know, maybe this is another seven inches, you know, up like that. So you, so you're reading the print and you're doing these parallel lines and then now you need to come in here and trim up all these sections. So you could do trim two, so you can go from here to here and then here to here and then here, uh, you, you end up with trim two, you end up clicking multiple times, uh, because you have to do it for each corner where if you do, uh, trim strings, Okay, you can just click around at all the intersecting geometry and it cleans it up. So that uh, I think is a very useful feature. If you haven't tried trim strings, uh, I would recommend doing so. Okay, and then the final one that I'm going to show here for trim and extend is quick trim. Uh, I'll just get some circles up on the screen here uh, so I can get some intersecting geometry. Uh, quick trim is... Uh, probably one of our uh, most popular uh, trim functions. You can do quick trim, and then this just allows you to click on what you want to delete. Okay, so whatever it is that you want to delete, you click on it, and then those things will go away. If you're not using quick trim, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, using quick trim. Again, you just click on what you want to delete, and then those items go away. All right, if there's any questions about the trim and extend, uh, go ahead and fire away. I use it all the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, quick trim. Yeah, I use quick trim all the time, but uh, uh, modal I don't use all the time, but uh, maybe I need to look into that a little bit more. All right. So we have two entities, modal, string, and quick trim. If there are any questions about the trim and extend, uh, go ahead and fire away. Uh, we got just a couple of minutes left uh, before the uh, 205 mark, and now we're on break. Okay. So break, we're gonna go to utilities, uh, break. Under break, you're gonna see break screen, uh, break entity, break angle, break many, and divide. Now, break is you know a way for you to break that geometry, all right? So if we look at this, let's say we're, let's say we have an arc, uh, arc sketch, we'll just, Put one here and put one there. All right, so let's say that you wanted to, like if we snap a point on the end of this, we'll do point end. Uh, this is the zero degree uh, of that arc. All right, you may want to uh, break that arc at a section. So you could go break uh, screen. So I could select this arc and then I could pick an arbitrary position to break it. And then you can see how this is now uh, broken into multiple entities. Okay, so we'll do point end. So you can see there's a point end there, and this one only has one. So I could break that um, at an arbitrary location by using break uh, screen. Uh, the other way you could use this is break uh, angle. It may make more sense to break at an angle. So we could say break angle. I wanted this to be 66 degrees. We'll click on this arc here, and then what it will do is break that arc at 66 degrees. This is, um, you know, if we put a point uh, arc center and we draw a line uh, between here and here and here and here, um, the angle between those two would be 66 degrees. Okay, so we can see there's 66. So you can use, uh, if you're trying to break a circle at a certain point, you can use it that way. Um, let's see what else we have. We have break uh, entity. So right now we have this entity and this entity, you know, so this is a solid line here, okay? And this is a solid line here. So if we say this one and this one, what will happen now is it will break um, this entity 
uh, at the intersection of that line. All right. Um, is that break point tied to your angle settings in preferences? No, it is not. Uh, Vic, it's not. All right. So we got uh, break uh, entity. Again, you can select the entity that you want to break and then where you want to break it at. And you can see that it will break it at that intersection. Okay. The other one we have here, break uh, many. Uh, we, you know, probably th these were used more often in the past. Um, I'm just going to go like this and I'm going to go like that. You can see that this is a, a solid line. This is a solid line. This is a solid line. This is a solid line. So what you could do is break uh, many uh, window, sec uh, window select this geometry and at points of intersection, what it will do is it will break that geometry. So now these are separate entities. Um, this used to be one of the methods we would use for trimming is we would use a break many and then you can get rid of your inside shapes. Uh, Grant has a question, break, break many, et cetera. It doesn't always break, never had this issue in earlier versions. Um, I don't know, like you'd have to give me a scenario, Grant, when it wasn't breaking or how it wasn't breaking. Um, uh, if you haven't submitted one of those files to support, I'd recommend doing so. And then uh, we can figure out what's going on there. I'm not, you're saying break and break many. Um, you know, the breaking function probably isn't as important as it had been in the past. Um, just what you covered. If, if what I'm showing you here, I, I think you're, I'm not sure what version you're on. Grant, you may want to send a sample file over to support and they'll figure out if you're on a current build or uh, a current build of 29 or whatever might be going on there for you. But uh, as far as I understand, the break functions have worked the same way. Um, that they've worked uh, as as long as I've known them. So I, I don't know if there's a special scenario that you're dealing with there, but it'd be great to help you out. All right, and then the last one here, so we have break many. The last one is uh, divide. So you may have a line uh, or an arc, and you may want to uh, break it into a number of segments. So you can do uh, utilities, break, divide. You could say, I want this to be in six segments. So it will go from a solid line to now one that has uh, six uh, equal uh, segments here. Okay, so uh, that is an example of break and the different functions of break. This can be useful with some of your wireframe construction. Uh, sometimes uh, it's really necessary to uh, break geometry at certain angles, break geometry that intersects, or divide geometry into equal segments. So. Uh, it really just depends on the project that, you, that you're working on. If there's any questions about the break function, um, go ahead and fire away. Uh, the last one, I have just a few minutes here. Uh, the last one that we have is the 2D Boolean. Okay, 2D Boolean is a, a very uh, useful feature. There's a, a lot of ways that you can use uh, 2D Boolean. Uh, we're going to do a scenario like this. Uh, we're going to do a a scenario uh, like this. Um, 2D Boolean is just a, a faster way to break geometry that's intersecting, okay? So we can do uh, utilities, and this one's gonna be down here, 2D Boolean. Um, 2D Boolean is very similar to uh, 3D Booleans where you can either add, uh, subtract, or intersect. Uh, the main reason why we incorporated 2D Booleans uh, into the software is to speed up geometry editing, okay? So if we're going to do an add function here, we can select our first shape, spacebar, select our second shape, spacebar, and you can see how they added those two together. So it's less clicks versus going in there and breaking or uh, clicking multiple uh, insides in order to delete, okay? Uh, if we undo this and we do a subtract, we could say this one, spacebar, this one, spacebar, and that will subtract those two. Uh, if we do an intersect, so we can say this one, spacebar, this one, spacebar, and that will give us the intersection of those two objects, okay? So you have uh, add, subtract, and intersect. We're, we're going to do that again in this example. So we're going to do this shape with these shapes and you can see how it added them together we're going to do a subtract which is this shape with uh subtracting these shapes and then they'll go away 
and then you can also do an intersect which would be this shape with this these shapes here now uh 2d boolean i mean it's definitely a very useful feature there's a lot of applications for it uh but again it depends on the kind of work that you're doing um i use this often with uh plasma based applications where uh you know i'm, I'm connecting uh letters to um you know a shape so maybe i have something like uh maybe i have something like a, a series of numbers like 877-333-4903, which is today's uh, promo number uh, for the Refer a Friend uh, program that we're doing right now, 877-333-4903. Um, a lot of times what you may want to do is intersect this with a shape here uh, down on the bottom like this. You may want to connect all this geometry it looks like i need to move it up slightly um again this is for like a, a plasma uh based application uh, uh, i don't need five copies here i just need one okay where i want to connect all of these numbers to uh a shape so let me explode my text here so i'll explode this so we have uh, our text oh our text and our shapes. So we can use this for 2D Booleans. We can say 2D Boolean. We're gonna say add. We're gonna select um, this shape here. Uh, it looks like I didn't get it all. So let me trim this up. Uh, view all. Top. All right, let me get this one here and here. All right, so to have to go in and try to trim all those away, that's really tough. So what we're going to do is 2D Booleans. We're going to say add. Uh, we're going to select all of that geometry, lesser this line. So we're going to say that plus that, and then it will just trim it all for us. So again, it's, uh, uh, like I said, very common to use in the 2D arena. Again, I want to thank... Um, each and every one of you for spending some time with us here today. I know you guys are busy and time is uh, time is money. So again, I want to thank you for participating in today's webinar. Uh, with Bobcat, as always, you can expect fewer steps, better cuts, and more profit. Uh, if you guys want to take advantage of the Refer a Friend program we're running here today, call in at 877-333-4903 for more details. By referring a friend, you're going to get a free seat of your software. Um, also, any purchases made today, add-ons, upgrades, anything that you guys might do, um, we are offering a free Machinist Toolbox. It's our speed and feed calculator shop floor uh, utility. It does all kinds of math operations that I'm sure you guys will appreciate. If there are any additional questions that you have for me, you can always reach out. I look forward to seeing you in next week's webinar. Thank you so much and have an awesome day. Thank you, guys. Thank you.